Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to build those nice button UI where the user selects it and the color um, basically goes to it, showing indicating that the user has selected that field. And this is gonna be a quick 10 minute tutorial so you can easily take away and build those into your app. Let's get started. So here I have a blank page where we're gonna start. And in order to create those custom buttons that allows us to uh, reflect the latest um, change. What we need firstly is um, an app state. So here I'm just gonna call this app state selected text and it's gonna be of type string. And it's gonna be nullable. Um, so because the initial load stage will be, there's basically nothing selected, hence I'm gonna make this nullable. And to make these buttons, I'm just gonna create a container. Very basic here. Let's create a, a container that's infinite wide. Let's add some borders to it. Um, let's make it a height of, I'll just have a unrestrained height for now. And then within this text, I am gonna put hello world or t some text form you know, as a placeholder for now. I'm gonna add some padding to it of uh, 12 or around the border. And then this will basically come to life soon. Um, so I'm just gonna create this as a gray just to show, show you um, what it looks like. Um, but of course we can change those colors later on. Um, next, what I wanna do here is maybe let's make um, add some padding to this um, column here, just so it looks a bit neater here. So this is basically the button and this is gonna be a placeholder button for now. What we're gonna do here is basically the first thing we're gonna do here is convert this into a component. The reason why I'm converting it into a component is because it allows us to um, use the same design everywhere, but the button is flexible because we're gonna add logic into it and call back logic into it. This will reduce a lot of um, subsequent changes. For example, if you have all these buttons here, which are all individual um, widgets, if you make, you want to change the design of one, instead of having a gray background as a blank, you'll have orange. You're gonna have to make, you're gonna have to make changes across the board, I and mean, that's gonna take you time. But the beauty of a component here, when we're converting to a component, is that this will be. You only need to make one change, and it reflects across all the buttons. So, firstly, I'll show you how it works. So, I'm gonna press convert to component. I'm gonna call this button component. And what do we need from this component? So the first thing we need is, let's change this back to, oh, let's make it a gray, so it shows unselected. If it's selected, let's make it a blue later on. Okay, so first things first, what do we need? We need parameters. So what do we need as a parameter? So we need the parameter to text to display. I'm just gonna make it clear for you. Um, so it's gonna be of type string. Um, second parameter we need is the current selected text. And that's gonna be of type string. Let's do that. And then lastly, we need a callback parameter. So we're gonna call it callback action. Um, and then we're gonna make this a action parameter. And then the parameter we need is text to uh, return. So what a callback parameter will allow you to do here is the following. When this button is clicked, it causes action and returns the value back to the parent. It allows us to pass value from this component back to the page. And that's basically how we can get those value to the parent level. And the beauty of that is that this is super flexible. Callback action is super flexible, especially if you have components later on, uh, components within components. Um, this is a very powerful skill. I think you should master and try it out as much as possible. So what's the first thing we're gonna do? So the first thing we're gonna do is the text that I wanna show. Instead of showing hello world, I'm gonna go text to display. I'm just gonna call our default value here. And the second things we're gonna do is let's make this fill color to be uh, maybe light blue. When um, the text we have selected here, where the user clicks here, it selects the selection to be light blue and then all the buttons will become gray, will remain gray. So how do we do this? So the fill color, we're gonna do some conditional. So if the single condition 
if the text to display is equal to the current selected text, that means this component is text is exactly the same as what's been selected at the page. We're going to make this blue, light blue. Else it's going to be that alternate gray color. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's the setup for now. There should, and then basically now here, we can see here the button component is throwing the error saying that we need to pass in those parameters. And one thing we're gonna do here is update page and change because what we want to, because what happened here is that you want to press update page and change because it allows us to click this button or whatever button will show and then it updates the page accordingly. So if you click this here, so for example, if I add three buttons here or four or five even as I'm padding to it, if we click the first one, it updates the page to this to be blue. And it clicks the second one, it removes this and changes to gray and this becomes blue. And I will show you how it works. So let's pass some values here. Let's say this is a, um, a language, right? Select your language. So, so let's say um, what language you wanna learn about. Let's say you wanna learn English as the first one. Um, the display text will be Chinese, I want to learn Chinese, I want to learn Japanese, I want to learn Spanish, and I want to learn Italian. Okay, so these, you see how I can, let's say I don't like the UI of this and I want to make this um, maybe a little light, I don't know, pink, orange, salmon color. So you see how the color just change across all the components instead of you having to change it five times. So I'm gonna change this back to the gray here because I do like this gray a bit more than the bright salmon color. So, okay, so what happens next? So the current selected text needs to be the page state selected text. So I'm gonna do this across the board. So ideally, actually, ideally, the first step is that you configure one component and then copy it multiple times and change the text to the display. So I'm just gonna do that actually, it's a bit faster. So the callback action now. So when the button is clicked, what happens? So firstly, we're gonna go back to the button component and then what we're gonna do is execute callback in the action. And the callback we need is the callback action from the parameter and the text return is the, the text to replay. Uh, re the text to return is the text to display. So we're basically returning to the parent the display value here, what is being shown. Okay, and now on the callback action, so basically at the page level now, what happens when that callback is executed from the button component? So we want to update the page state. So we'll update the page state of selected text with the set value of the callback parameter text to return, and then we rebuild the current page. And basically let's try this out, and I'm just gonna paste this. Uh, five times again. So now the now all we gotta do is change this text to display. So I think it was Spanish, Spanish and Italian. So I am gonna hit, um, I was gonna do a quick Chrome local run and see what it looks like. Okay, now that the app has loaded, I'm gonna show you how it works. So you can see here we have um, the five languages here and when the user clicks one of them, it will say English, and then it will go Chinese, and then you can see Spanish, Italian. And then if we load the, um, if we load the, the debug tool, you can see here the selected text on the page state is updating accordingly. So we move this here, let me shrink this, go English, you can see here, this turns into English, it's Chinese, this turns into Chinese. And this basically allows you to subsequently use this selected state, uh, selected text on the page state to subsequently navigate or uh, navigate to the next page passing this value or you update the document uh, with this value here. Basically it's stored here. One error that you might often fall, that might uh, have issue with when it loads is a null error. And it's funny because Flutterflow is kind of weird. Here, I actually faith, and this is a quite a common problem uh, in apps, a null issue. And um, people who first jump into Flutterflow will always face this and they're like, what is going on? A null error basically means a widget is expecting a value, but you're passing nothing in. And when I first loaded this project, 
somehow it was throwing a null error and I was 100% sure that it was because of the local page state is null because when you pass in a null value here into the selected uh, current text, and then it's trying to do that comparison of whether the uh, text to display is equal to the selected text. If it's null, it will just throw an error. Um, somehow by, uh, the flutter flow is kind of weird here. Let's just say you face that value, put a initial value text of XX or whatever, reload it, and then subsequently remove it. And it works perfectly fine after that for some reason. Um, might be a bug here. Don't know why suddenly adding a value and then removing it just totally fixes the app. But that's basically um, how you can fix that null error for this UI here. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Hope you really enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to build those nice UI buttons um, in a very efficient way. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe for more content on Floodflow. See you next time. Bye.